Hello, welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going back to the old quirky houses. I want to do a nice little quirky house scene moving into 2024. Um, I will be using my regular colours um, that uh, they will be on screen now um, and I will be using the brushes. I will be using my Escoda size 16 Aquario. Uh, okay. And I'll also be using my Escoda size 12 Perla. And I may, I may, for some very tiny details, be using this uh, size 3 brush. I don't know where I got it from, so I'm very sorry about that. I will see if I can find out and, and put it in the comments. But just get yourself a really nice pointed um, small brush. Um, for the very finest details so firstly i'm gonna throw a little bit of color in the background i'm gonna just add a bit of water first and right i think i'll put a bit of a mixture of french ultramarine with upper rows there you go and then just to finish it off I'll just purely French ultramarine just to um, blend into that colour now to mix it I do it really simple you just tip it up go from side to side Give it a shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. All around. Yeah. And if you want it to look rainy, tip it down on its edge like that and the, the pigment will gently fall down to a nice pattern. So, that's that bit done. That was difficult, wasn't it? And now I'm going to see these little bits here which are weld up if I left them they would create that shape I don't really want that so I'm just going to add some a damp brush down and bring these down just pulling them down and you have to do this when the paint is still when the paper is still quite damp all you do is just teasing it down Add a bit of water, if you need be like that, just to fetch it down. You don't want things like that, because that will show in the final piece. And we'll just add a bit of water, bringing it down there. And what I think we'll do is we'll leave that to dry naturally. So I'll be back in a few minutes. Now... This paint is not quite dried yet. It's still very slightly damp. Um, it's not very wet, but it's just got a little sheen of damp on it. And I'm going to use that to my advantage. So I'm going to just use a little bit of... I'm going to use my pearler brush, my small one. I'm going to add a little, just pick up a little bit of this... Um, the first sky colour, which was a mixture of um, uh, upper rose and um, ultramarine blue. And we can add a little, just a, the slightest tad of um, Payne's Grey to it. And because it's nice and soft, it's because it's still damp, it should feather out that. See that now? And that's perfect for doing trees that are in the distance. You know where those branches kind of feather out into, into a place where you can't really identify them. And you can't see the edges. The edges seem to be lost in the sky. Well, that's what we've done with that. I think we'll do a little bit over here as well. Just add a little bit more just over the top there we want these to be in the far distance so we're not using a strong mixture and we're basically using 
more or less the same mixture as the sky. If you start putting colours in like greens and it just looks wrong because as things go back you lose that that um, that definition of colour and that's called aerial perspective it's where all the tiny little uh, molecules get in between you and the subject and it distorts things and it takes away the colour so there's your science lesson for the day eh? right I think we'll go over that part here as well it's starting to dry a little bit more here so I have to be pretty careful so I'm just going to go up to the edge of that church there right now I'm happy with that but I don't want this, these clumpy edges at the bottom so I'm going to use a thirsty brush just to just to break up those edges and when I say a thirsty brush it means a brush that I've just damped in into the water and just dragged through a handkerchief and it means it's still quite wet but it's got the power to suck up um, water it's not too it's not too bad at doing that little job for us right I think just bring this down now see this up I'm just creating a little, just dragging that pigment down ever so slightly to the top of this roof and this part yeah I'm just going to show you now because it's quite dry there so I'm going to use that brush and fetch some little tiny little branches down there and you can only just see them which is good because it's in the very far distance they may even fade away to probably nothing but because everything when you when you paint it dries a lot lighter so sometimes you have to overcompensate um, knowing that that color is going to dry out much lighter so here we go so i'm, I'm thinking this background is nearly done now those trees are pretty much dry but just to hurry those along uh, I use a hairdryer on that a little bit back in a minute now that's really dried out it's touch dry it's not going to smudge and things aren't going to run into it if uh, if I put a bit of paint on that area now what we're going to do is we can just do some of the, the background uh, the background object so we've got a little church over here I'm gonna use the same color again as the sky with a little bit more paint gray in only a tad might even put a little bit of brown bitumen right now then let's just see how this is on oh, that tree see we and this church we're we'll talking about the kid tree the church there there you go and it's quite easy to paint that because we're painting wet onto dry But what I'm going to do with this, I want to give it a little bit of character, so I'm going to bring it down to nothing, so it's like it's it's fading out. There's a little bit of mist underneath here, and how we do that is we just wet our brush, give it a little, make it a little bit thirsty, and then just now it's all damp at the bottom, but I'm just using the tip just to touch that pigment area yeah and just leave that let that do its own job there i'm just going to get a bit more water at the bottom just to encourage this paint to come down a little bit i'll go back into it there we go we're just encouraging that paint to go down there i'm just going to just the tip of the brush and I'm slightly pushing up 
I'm going to leave that now. Let that do its own its own thing. There we go. Let's see what happens there. Right, so that's that bit dealt with. And I've got I'm gonna have a couple of uh, I'm gonna have a little building at the back here, so the same mixture. There. And we're gonna put a little chimney pot here. Now buildings are quite quite boring. They're just like a square box, but if you put a bit of character into your chimney pots and just wobble that roof a little bit, it makes all the difference. See, so we put that pigment in there, and now I'm going to get a little thirsty brush. And I'm wetting the bottom with the, the thick part of the brush and touching the paint, the pigment, with the tip of my brush. There you go. Now let's just tip that up a little bit, just to encourage it. Runs down and does our job for us. Now I'm just going to lift some of this off here. It's starting to streak a little bit. I don't want that. I want a quieter. So I'm just lifting it off, the bits that I'm, I think, well, that's done its job. Just lift that off a little bit. I'm going to straighten that edge a little bit at the bottom of that water area and bring that down. Right. Now, to me, there's not enough pigment coming through there, so I'm just going to just, uh, just drop a little bit in there. Lift it up and then pop it down. And now with a damp brush, a thirsty brush, just tease bits of pigment into that area. And that's that bit done. Mmm. Okay. Yeah, some we're gonna have some um, branches coming down there. Now we're going over there. Let's balance this out a little bit. We'll put something in the back. Now we're going to put a little. Apex of a roof up there. And all I'm going to do is put a dump. Just a dump tip there. Just for that area. And now just pull that out. Pull it down. There we go. It looks like something's in the distance now, doesn't it? There we go. That was easy peasy, wasn't it? Of course we can do that. Right, let's let those dry now. I'm going to bring a bit of colour to this scene. I've just made a little mixture of burnt sienna, orange and a little touch of red. And let's just see how that we're, we're going to play a safety part. Put it on the safety bit of this, this chimney pot. If it's too if it's too garish, we can overtake it off the can't we? We're not really taking much of a chance. Right, now I've done that. I'm going to add the water to there. Don't forget, this is going to dry a lot lighter. To there now I'm gonna now add a bit of purple and blue a bit more purple and a bit of upper rose just to the bottom part here and to the to that shape of that roof there there we go So 
See, we don't use rulers. I think they're completely unnecessary, uh, unless you're an architect. And they tend to take away that spontaneity from the scene. And it takes away that character, the personality from the picture. Now, I like that, where that orange is running to there. So I'm going to add a little bit of that orange in here. I just think it looks very pretty. Just mixing bits with it. Now I'm going to come down with a damp brush right the way down the bottom of this house. So as you can see, the only colour really is at the top of this house. And we're just bringing it down. Now let's start, see what happens if we turn that up there. If we turn it up, that pigment should start running down a little bit more. Just a little bit. It's starting to come down a little bit there. I'm quite happy with that. Now then, let's add a little bit of Opera Rose just to this area here. Just at the bottom there. And then we'll dampen all that area so it just blends its way in. Pushes its way around. Let's add a bit more purple to the bottom there. Yeah. We'll go all the way across there. Even though I think we're going to have a bush here actually. So let's leave that part there. Just a little hanky and just lift down some of that colour there. Right, no, a bit more of that orange, I do like that. And drop that out over there, that building. A bit of a damp brush there, just a damp brush with no pigment on it. Just. Yeah, I think we're alright with that. Let's let that dry. Now let's do the same with this building over here. Let's start with a little bit of purple at the top there. A bit of, and we'll add a bit of opera rose as we come down here. Now then, let's add a touch of something nice and dark, a bit of bitumen with a little bit of that orange colour, just at the bottom. Let's go across there. That's just quite thick, that, so we'll add a bit of water to it. And drop these colours down a little bit. Let's add some clean water now to that area and just pull that down a wee bit just to see how that looks it's all about experimenting and it doesn't matter if it doesn't turn out well it's your picture and you know better for next time i just had a bit of this hopper rose in here right okay Right, so the next one to do, we're going to put a bit of blue on this side because this is the side that's in shadow. We'll go right the way down there. And now I'm going to add some clean water at the bottom just to, to tease that down. There we are. Just mix some mixtures up there just to see how that goes. I'll we'll shape it out again later. Now it's big pointy. I'm gonna have a big pointy house here with a very very pronounced 
gable. Looks like an alpine shape now with a bit of orange underneath there. Now I'm going to pull out those shapes. Pull them down. Alright, and I drag them down like that with some clean water. Up rows there just to colour that up a little bit, make that look nice and bright. Let's drag these gables down a little bit more. And one over here. Clean water again. And clean water down to here because we have a nice big bush there. And have a bush coming over to that part as well. Just obscuring the front of there. Alright. I'm going to do one here. Well, okay, it's purple. An upper rows just for that reef. Be careful not to smudge into there. Really, I should have started from this side and moved on, and I've been a lot safer then, wouldn't I? And a bit of orange. Go there. Chimney pot there. I'm going to put another chimney pot here as well, chimney stack. There we go. All right. This orange. And over to that side. And a bit of opera rose and we'll bring this over here a little bit making sure I'm leaning my finger on a part that hasn't just been painted and which is wet leave a re put my finger there it just gives it a bit of steadiness the hardest thing to do I think is to paint with your with your hand over hovering over there like that You've just got no control at all. Right. Put a bit some in there. <clears throat> now I'm just going to use a, a damp brush and a little tad of blue just to pull that down here. I'm going to have a clean brush now, just in there. And that part. We're going to get some lovely shadows in there later on. And this part here is a little wall that we're going to be putting in. In the orange again. So, little wall bits. Down there. And back to the, uh, the purple, I'm going to use a bit of bitumen at the bottom. I want it to be darker at the bottom than it is at the top. Right. And some just water, clean water. Run along the top there, on the bottom, and just bring things together. They should all be connected in some way. All be connected together like this. There's a wall there. There's something crying out to be a wall. And now a bit of purple here. And down there, wow. Well, 
Now we'll let that dry. Welcome back, it's all dried now. And what I'm going to do is, I forgot to put a chimney pot on this, so I'm going to use a bit of burnt sienna just at the top there. Burnt sienna there. And two chimney pots there. Now I'm going to add a little bit of orange just to the bottom of that. There we go. I'm going to pull some of that down. Makes that colour much more vibrant than when you add that water in there, you know. So important. Alright. Now I'm going to, to that, I'm going to add a little bit of opera rose just to give it a jolly, a jollying along. And now I'm going to go into my purple. And a mixture of ultramarine blue and opera rose. And I'm going to just clarify some of these things here. So I'm just going to go in over just over the edges. And Oh. Right now, on that part there, I want to have a little bit of burnt sienna underneath that there. I want it darker. I want it quite dark at the top. Quite dark there. Emphasising the pointiness. And just under there. Add a bit of this opera rose underneath there. Oh, actually, a bit of orange. And now, a bit of clean water just to pull that down and drag that down and add that bit of colour. Let that colour magic itself down there. Now, and we have some coming from that side, so I'm going to put a couple of rays of light here where the light's caught just that little area there now a little bit of purple down here because we want it to be quite dark getting to the bottom and we'll just put some little jaggedy bits here so it could be something of interest it might be a little bush or something like that I think it will be and just under there, just to clarify those areas and a wee bit of purple underneath that chimney stack and also the top of these little chimney pots. There we go. That will do that bit. Now back to this one. and a bit of burnt sienna, burnt sienna on top of there and it's going to be nice and dark, dark at the top of the chimney pots and underneath there the stack now I'm going to use a bit of this opera rose just up that part there, and I'm now I'm going to add a little bit of orange just under here, underneath that. And I'm going to blend those down together and pull it right down there. So I'm going to show that some little bits of light coming on just over there, just at the edges there, and underneath here. Is going to be that purple colour. And just drag that down. I think we'll add a little bit of burnt sienna to that actually. There we go. I think that'll do for that. 
that's going to dry it up and soften that edge with some damp water, some clean water, not damp water, a damp brush with clean water in it. Now, we're going to do the same treatment to this. But I'm going to start off with a bit of burnt sienna at the top. here and at the bottom here and just add quite a bit more at the apex now I'm going to go into my purple just these areas here I'm going to add a little bit of water to this just to bring that down I think we'll have a bit of upper rose again. Yeah. And with the side of the brush, track that over there. Got a little bit of light coming through there. Alright, now at the bottom needs to be dark. So I'm going to have a bit of bitumen with purple. And Just add to the bottom there, draw a little line at the bottom and just zigzag your brush around. Now we're going to a clean brush at the tops just to soften that edge. Just to soften that edge there. And what we can do now, while that is very, very wet, Go into your Payne's Grey and just tap it into there and you know, I think I'm going to put a bit of Payne's Grey at the top there as well only at the top right, and we'll do that bit there as well now that's starting to dry out a little bit so I'm just going to use a damp brush to tease it down that's all And the same with this now. All we're doing is emphasise the darkness at the top of that, that apex. So I'm going to pull that out here. It's starting to get carried away with itself. Alright, now well then. Let's have a look at this one. We're going to put some extra pigment. So I'm just using the, the purple for this side. Now uh, this is an opportunity to straighten that roof up at the other side. Okay, back into there. Just using the same purple colour as a shadow colour now. There we go, and we can go run right, right over the ape, the um the eaves. And down there. There we go because that's properly in shadow. Um, I think we should do a little chimney stack on there though. So we'll do one here. We'll put in there. And a couple of, and uh, we'll do a few there. Three, and uh, let's just go into that bitumen just to top those off. Right, I'll put a shadow right the way down there actually, that looks quite nice doesn't it? Right, now it's time, oh let's get some of these, I've got some distant trees in the back here, I'm using some of this purple but it's very very washed out. And I accidentally pulled a little bit of green to that so it might be God's way of saying you need a bit of green in there so. so. Not that you can really see that green, to be honest with you. So, I'm um, using these very tall trees. So I'm just using the shape of the brush. So it goes pointy like that. See, the shape of the brush is like that. So. Down there. And now I'm gonna, you guessed it, clean water, bring it down to almost nothing. At the bottom there. And we'll do the same at the other side. 
shape of the brush and all I'm doing is pressing it down and letting the brush shape do the painting for me and let me do its work and if you want to um, if we want to describe these trees a little bit closer which we can do is I'll just lift that bit off there is just that at this stage just a, a little tad the tiniest of tads of olive green so olive green is basically green with a bit of burnt sienna I'm just going to drop these in just in a few places there And it starts to add a little bit of colour, which tells us that this is a little bit closer. Can you see that? As that gets colour, it looks closer than that building at the back. So let's let that dry. Come <coughs> back. Now, this is the part where we're starting to get a little bit of detail in our painting. So for this part here, I'm gonna um, we're gonna start moving backward to forward. So we're gonna use a little bit of um, a little bit of paint gray. And I'll show you. I'll show you the mixture we're making here on the screen. On the screen. Right. Right. I'm using this well here. It's had a bit of blue in it. And that's going to be helpful to us. Right, there's your blue. And see how watery that is, that blue. Now, uh, a little bit of paint grey, which is here. You see that paint grey? Now, that in itself might just do the job, but I want to um, warm that up a little bit. So I'm putting a little bit of burnt sienna in there. You see how translucent that mixture is. It's not very. Uh, I'll see. It. I'll just paint a little bit on here. See, it's not. It's like a grey. So that's perfect. So I'm going to use this fine brush that I was talking about at the start. Yeah. So I'm going to just run that into there. I'm going to start from the left and work my way across. We're doing these these branches in the trees. So just with the very tip of it, I'm going to just. Oops! I had a lot of malfunction there. All right. Your branches are going to come right the way down there. Start thin at the top and down there to thicker at the bottom. We're just taking these long, tall branches right the way down there, and we're going to have some little offshoots from them. And if you can, make them thinner at the top and thicker at the bottom. Because otherwise, it looks a bit wrong. So I'm going to speed this video up now. Okay, so that's that bit done. Now we're going to add a bit of branches, a few branches to... To these trees here so I'm using the same mixture let's hope it it shows through I'm sure it will let's just put a few on here Just to show a little bit of 
shape really. Now, back on our perler brush, we're going to start to add some details here. So I'm going to move, go from left to right. I've got my purple colour in there and a mixture of burnt sienna. Put mainly purple and a bit of this opera rose and a little tide of the old French ultramarine. Let's see what happens here. I might have to change this colour up a bit. And we're just creating some shadow under the eaves now. Okay. So I, I call this stage one shadowing, which is, it's not a final shadowing. This is just creating a little bit of form. So now we just put some of these shadows, this shape shadow, well, let's put a let's put a little chimney, a little little window in here. I'm gonna put up just the one there. Okay. And we have one there, and we have a doorway here. Now. Just put a little outline there with the purple and we're going right into some red. Now, I'm going to pull that red down with a bit of bitumen brown. A bit more uh, bitumen. I want it to be darker at the bottom. Ideally, I just want that colour to show at the top of this door rather than all over the place. I'll lift that out a bit. Now I'm just going to, I don't want these windows to be too dark, so I'm going to lift out some of that colour there. And right, let's move on to here. Let's have some colour here, some uh, windows here. There. These are like old mullion windows. Three there. And we have three there. And we're going to have a red door here. Uh, and back the old bitumen at the bottom, that's the dark, and we'll pull that down with some clean water, here we go, we have a nice <coughs> um, bush here, I'm going to colour it initially in yellow because I want that to be its highest colour. Bring it over here. There you go. Nice bright bush. Now, let's see if this works at the moment. A little bit of orange just on the underside to give it a gradual, just a very slight fold. Right, now then. Back to the purple on these buildings here. One there. One there. One there. Okay. I think we'll have a doorway here. Just a boring old dark doorway there. Over here. Let's get some nice 
bright colours here and a bush here. The brightest of the colour would be yellow. And as is, I'm going to run that into there so it pulls some of that colour out. So it's just obscuring the window there and now a bit of orange underneath. Orange for there, orange for that one, on the left side and the underneath side. Let's leave that to dry for a minute. Now I'm going to go back into these areas with a very dark colour. So I'm going to go into my Payne's Grey, it's just neat Payne's Grey. And here's where I can put my little windows in. Four little dots there. Four wee dots there. Okay, now let's put around this door here. Now this the sharpness of this pointy brush here, this is where we start to neaten all these little lines out. Just put little bits of interest with this brush. Just look at the scene, look at each house and think, does that need anything there? Now I'll tell you what this one does, back to me big pearler. Well, let's get some shadows in here now. Get some shadows in, what I'm using. A mixture of colours uh, for my shadows, I'm using purple, blue, paint grey. And we're going to go this way. That's a shadow for that chimney pot. A little shadow there for that. Shadow just underneath that door there. And put a shadow at the back of that bush. I've done up that bush as well, as well now. The bush here. I'll just get a bit of shadow there. I change the colour of that brush to emphasise everything and a window in there. Now these bushes here can do with a bit of warming up. So now, hmm, so I've got a bit too mad with that. So I'm going to have a bit of yellow and red. And just create a little bit of texture just underneath, underneath these. Texture underneath there. That one. And I'm going to go, lovely, have a, go for a lovely red bush here. Right. Now, the next thing is 
to do is to get a foreground in. Now then, I've got a, a nice brush that I like to use in the foregrounds. And I'm using this little, little fan brush for things like that. So dab it in the water. Well, use a bit of colour to bring this down first. And well, get a bit of green in here. Just put some. Here's a mixture of this is gold green I'm just putting in now. Just as an under colour. Let that dry a second. Now then, these windows, it's all about correcting your, your mistakes. These windows, I think, are a little bit too dark. So I'm going to bring them back to life by using our lovely friend, Mr. Gouache. And I'm going to put some little windows In there, just heighten that up like that, and that's and it can it does the trick. Just add a few little highlights to places. Just brightens up certain bits. Now then, now that's bits done. I'm all right with that. Now I'm going to get a little bit of colour in these in these bushes. I'm going to put some. Some interest in that. A little bit of interest with that just by putting some bushy bushy branches just using the same colour from all really but a bit of shadow under there and we go now we can move over to our greens. So I'm using a bit of the um, bit of sap green and a little bit of burnt sienna to turn that into a an olive green. And now just with the tip of the brush, I'll just brush it out a little bit. With the tip of the brush, I'm just going to dab. In here, just to change the shape of that brush, just dip it back into the colour and push basically damage or destroy the shape of that, that edge by just pushing down. You know what I mean? I'll show you what I mean, just down like that, and it takes away that shape and we can use a different shape then here we go pushing it down all the time as it gets towards you it gets a little bit more um, crazy a bit more all over the place 
there you go and I think we're going to call that finished so I hope you enjoyed it hope you uh, picked something up and learnt it for your own uh, for your own paintings uh, all the very best thank you